You never know who you're going to see at the local football and it's a great pleasure to welcome one of the all-time greats in Michael Tuck who's a Berwick legend but also a Hawthorne legend. His son Travis plays for Berwick, Michael. Denver yeah. Brereton told me you'd be one of the first to leave training and get a couple of stubbies nah, for the trip home. Is that right, Michael? Precious room, but... <laughs> nah, I'll see you. What it was, an old a trainer of ours, Dutchie Holland. Yes, I was, remember Dutchie. Well, he was, lived at Upper Beaky and I used to be on the match committee later on in my career and Dutchie would go to the trainers and he'd have a few drinks, so I'd drive home, but we always go past the tower bottle shop on the way through. And, I shouldn't say this, but we all used to get a couple. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hemi's a couple, Michael, too. No, we had to pull over and first because I, oh, you can't drink and drive, mate. No, no, of course you can't. Of course you, can. you were the second quickest to leave. Chris Mew was out before most of the players were even off the track, heading back to Rosebud. I was surprised Chris actually came down because he's that quick. <laughs> no, no, Chris, he actually finished the grand final one day and the story goes that he... He's, Finished the grand final, had a bit of a do, and he just went straight home. He's a very, very casual man, but he's probably one of the best footballers I've come across as a centre back. We're very fortunate. You've got Peter Knight to centre back. Yes. And he retires, and Chris Mew comes along, so you've got probably two of the best floating around anyway. Talking of Peter Knights, Rodney Ed made a comment a few weeks ago on radio where he said he thought Peter Knights was underrated as a superstar. Is that a fair comment? Oh, Not within your football club, but probably yeah. from outside of it. Probably, I'm not sure, I don't know how people sort of rate him because he had the blonde hair and looked good and they probably looked at him not as a footballer but as more glamorous, you know, but he could certainly play football. I, I'd put him down as probably one of the best athletes. I reckon his football skills, say Rodney Ede was excellent, probably not, this has not been critical, but I reckon that he... It took him a while to learn how to kick left foot properly and that's so his skills when he first came down they weren't as good as what they were when he left but at the time he could take a mark and he could fly and he, he was a perfect athlete that's what i meant to say that he's a terrific athlete and the football came natural to him the following division when i was growing up you could just uh, think about it and you could read it and you could memorize it in your sleep it was always the same every week scott tuck matthews Truth or myth, you didn't really speak to each other much on the field or off the field? Oh, we sort of, well, we never spoke to each other off the field, no. There was, um, Scotty and Lee didn't speak to each other very much. Didn't they? No, no, not because of anything personal. It's just, that's just their nature. And, and when I first went down, they called me Smiley because I never said a word to anybody. I was, <laughs> I was just that nervous all the time. But no, we never, we, we weren't critical of each other, but we never spoke to each other in respect that we had nothing in common, basically, except for when we got out on the ground. It turned out that we could actually play as a unit together and we communicated by you know, where you're going to stand and what you're going to do and like we always had to handball the loose because you wouldn't handball anybody else so things like that happened. <laughs> no, we did communicate but it was just different people. He's a great player. Lee? Well, I, it was just a natural. I reckon he's got, um, well you saw his, one of his uh, books he wrote, he was playing for Victoria when he was 12, 13 and all that type of stuff. So obviously he was always a brilliant footballer and I reckon when he was 16 he was where he was playing seniors. And he yeah, he played in premiership at Chelsea. Yeah, so he's very, very good. But to be honest with you, I rate him the best football I've ever seen because I saw him week after week and he was just a brilliant footballer in respect that he might look a little bit slow but he could always get to the contest and he could always win the ball. He could take a big mark for his size. But then later on, you know, you look at Gary Ablett Sr. and then you've got Wayne Kerry, but Lee, I rate him up very, very Played well. in seven premierships, does one stand out? Well, I'd be greedy here and say there's two, because we played in 76, 78, mm. and I was only pretty, pretty young as a football then, saying so at 23 or 4, and you think it's going to go forever? Yes. And then 83 came along, and then it was quite a few years, and I thought, well, this is good because it's back into it and then probably 86 because I was captain that day and we won the grand final and then all the players put me on their shoulders right in the middle of the MCG yeah. and lifted me up and, and that was sensation. You look around the crowd, you look down at the players, everybody's happy and that was probably one of the biggest milestones because first year as captain win the grand final, not that I did much but I had to toss the coin, you know. So. <laughs> oh, you're a bit hard. Oh, I'm sure you did a bit more than that.
76 was special because of Peter Crimmins, wasn't it? How old did you know Peter and what sort of person was he, Michael? Well, I first went down in 1971, so Peter was still playing. Yeah. I won the flag of that year. Yep. And then 72, and then Peter got cooking about 74, 75. But he was a terrific bloke and a very good footballer for his size. Mm. Like he had dainty little hands and little feet, but he had a real red eyed go. Yeah. So he was, he was very good and a very nice bloke, a gentleman. And yeah, it was a bit stiff what happened to him in 75. I thought it would have been nice to put him on the bench and bring him... I think John Kennedy still regrets that now. Yeah. It's his biggest regret in footy, he's said that well, many times. Well, he should have listened to me at the time, but anyway. <laughs> but what I mean is that, no, no, it was just that John had to make the decision and that was it. So basically we, I reckon that was, I would have done that, but North Melbourne on a roll and that was their first one and yeah. we couldn't stop them. So it was, at least we bounced back the next year. Well, that was all sort of on the back of Peter Crimmins, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah. Well, we, we sort of won it for ourselves and Peter too, mm. which was good. Best coach you had? You had some good ones, didn't you? I had a lot of good ones, really. I'd say Kennedy was very good. Uh, he probably I'd say him because he kept me in football a little bit longer. Because I know it sounds silly, but in the early 80s, it was, he said, Michael, it's more of a running game now, so you've got to get used to it. This mm. running game was a few more easy kicks to get and all that. I know it's progressed a lot, but still, it's we it started way back then too, so it's just evolution has just kept rolling along basically but he he probably kept me football a bit longer than that and yeah so he, and we had a, probably a lot of success with him regrets retiring at the end of 91 my understanding at the time michael was that you did want to keep going well you never really know when you've had enough basically but i was probably 38 so i would have liked to play one more year and uh i said to the coach joyce ellen joyce so i said that i'd um, i'd basically we tied from being captain and, and Gary S could be captain and then I'd basically, if I play poorly you can drop me so there's no embarrassment and then we know it's all over then but they thought it'd be best to go out on the high like a 38, just won a grand final mm -hmm. and you know, and your record will never get broken, the 426 they told me that, quote. <laughs> So anyway, things do change. But well, he's a marvel too, isn't he? Well, Boomer. He's done yeah. very well. Yeah. He's got a... You probably have a few green jackets hanging up in his shed at home because he, he bought a green jacket a few years before he finished. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Boomer. Yeah, no. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's a ripper, Boomer. He's no, a, I played. mean, he, just, he would have kept played. playing too. Well, he, could, he, he played well the last year, but I watched him a fair bit. He was very careful football. He didn't, <laughs> didn't run anywhere too hard. He sort of received a lot. Oh. <laughs> And he was a bit. He, well, to, 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 towards the end of his career, he was. Uh, I think the two-way running got to him a little bit. But he, he, as I said, he would have kept playing for as long as he could. He's still playing well for he North Hartlebury. He was now. playing very well, and he, he deserved the game. I agree with that. But I was just waiting for him to pull the old twanger. But he was just, <laughs> he was just too fit, and he was, he was a definitely can run. There's no drama. Never got injured much, Michael. What was the, what was the key for that? I mean, Dermot always said you were wiry. I mean, people said you were skinny, but you were wiry and tough and hard. Oh, well, I sort of well, brought up on the farm and that, so you're actually out lifting hay bales and doing this and that and the other thing off you know, in summer and, and we had to ride the bikes to catch the train to go to school and we had to walk and that, where the kids nowadays get driven everywhere, so I like to think that you're a little bit stronger, but I was always thin, but, well, as I said to Scotty, I'm not just skinny, but I'm very strong and he has a laugh, he, he thinks I'm very funny saying that, but, no, no, I can hold my own, basically, strength-wise, but... When you get against a real big, strong bloke, I couldn't, like, I'd be playing a bloke six foot six, so just too big for me. Yesterday was the 30th anniversary of Dermy kissing Bill Duckworth out at Waverley and then oh, running yeah. through the Eston Huddle. Were you there that day? Yeah, I was, actually, yeah. Did you say anything to him as captain? No, Probably couldn't oh, say too much to Dermot, could you? Well, no, well, I think Jeans might have had a bit of a go at him, but <laughs> everybody else just looked at him and just said, well, that, that's Dermot, so don't worry about it. Mate. Yeah, but he could play, though, Tucky, couldn't he? He could he play. Was, like he copped a fair whack, but he dished out a fair whack. Oh, he, but did. He, he He was a very good footballer. We had a game of Waverley years ago, and Dermot was running around for Victoria in the under-17s with these green boots on it. Yeah. Alan Jean said, see that bloke out there with the red hair and the bloody green boots? He's playing for us next year, and it was Dermot. And next year he came down, and near the end of the year he got a game in the finals. and Kick five. Yeah, so yeah. he had the ability, and he's, he was a very good footballer. I think Dermot uh, was... Once, All we've got to do is ask Dermot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, that's right. He was once quoted 
as saying when Jeansy saw him with the, I think it m might have been uh, very red coloured hair or y yellow coloured hair, long, wearing the green boots, he said, lucky, Sonny, you're getting a kick. Otherwise, <laughs> you wouldn't get a kick with, you wouldn't play with me because Jeansy was very straight, as we know, wasn't he, Mike? He was, actually, yeah, but I think he... Well, you've got to bend with the younger generation, so that's the way they go nowadays. Isn't it? And Berwick uh, going into a new competition next year. I mean, it's a, it's all change, isn't it? I mean, you were part of the VFL becoming the AFL and uh, teams coming from interstate. I mean, I suppose there wasn't much you could do about that. You just play where you have to play. But uh, for well, Berwick, it's sort of part of their history now that they'll be going into another competition and a chance to prove themselves elsewhere. Yeah, but it seems a pity, really, because... Well, I'm 65 now and I started at Berwick when I was 11, so it's, they've been going for that long and longer before me, and it just seems a pity with the way the towns are growing, you reckon Berwick should probably have two sides, Packham should have two sides, mm. instead of, obviously the younger boys aren't playing enough football and they don't, they'll come and watch, but they won't put the hard yards, and I think if you don't make the under-18s, you feel like you haven't got a chance to make it in the league. Like, say you don't make the Stingrays, yep. under-18s, well, you probably think, well, I don't think I'll make the AFL. But then the ones who don't make, there's not that many out of the under-18s you get drafted too. So mm. it's a vicious circle, and as I said before, it's just so much pressure on everybody. But yep. it's disappointing the league's got to fold or amalgamate with other sides, other teams, but that's just the way life is, isn't it? And, and do you like AFL nowadays, or, or do you think the game is, is just a little bit too compromised? Uh, and almost too sterile and the coaches just dominated too much looking for a win any way possible. Yeah, but it's just not enough fluency, I believe that like every time they change the rule, it bugs up the game. So that now they're going to change it again. Like you got a big ruckman going up and you used to have a third man up, you used to clear the pack, now the big ruckman's going up and the little rover comes in and puts his hand up. Like, because all he's going to do is knock it down. So it's just going to cause uh, congestion. Mm. And then you see a bloke get the ball and goes like that, it was a bloody throw. It is, it every is. day of the week. Yeah. yeah, and the umpire's just letting everything go. If you paid a free kick, you break the packs up a bit and things like that. But I haven't got the answer, it's all these brainy blokes. <laughs> so they've got the smarts. But if they had left it alone, it would have been better off in the first place. And now. The coach has got to get in and use his side to win the flag. Yep. And if another side can get in and it actually opens up the game and wins the flag, well, everybody will go back to that. So it's up to the boys at the top, really. Well, that's right. You can just sit back and watch, can't you? Yeah, but I don't watch it that much, mate. It's not worth watching because it's very frustrating. Shane had a good career at Richmond, over 170 league games. He's decided on a boxing career. How's that going and how do you feel about it? But most importantly, how does Faye feel about it? Oh, we're supporting the Shane, but... He, he finished his football and he's probably got a bit of the Abner genes in him, like he, he's, he could actually fight a little bit, but he, his first fight, everybody knows how bad it was, but they don't know how bad it was. He was sick as a dog on the Friday, he was vomiting and he had a little bit of concussion because he was had a spa and he, he shouldn't have fought, his management should have pulled him out, but he, he, he got over that and then he went back and just to prove himself that he, he could do it and he, he had a couple of fights and he won them but it was one of the hardest things to do what's your son because just one punch and it could be all over basically. Could be. Yeah. and Faye was, was well, just the same as me but just supportive we went along mm -hmm. to a few fights and yeah, he done pretty well but it's a very hard caper because the management seem to get most of the money. The fighters don't get the bug at all. Well, that's exactly Better right. player, Lee or Gaza, your, your um, brother-in-law? I mean, you thought Lee was the best player you played with, but what about playing against Gaza? You played a handful of games with him and he was probably at his prime by the time oh, you yeah. retired. Well, he played against us one day and he kicked five goals on the wing. Like, he just... Like, he, he kicked over a thousand goals, I think. So, yeah, he did. and he kicked half of them when he was playing on the wing and yeah. half forward flank. So, yeah. I think he kicked nine in a final against Essendon before he took on you guys in that brutal grand final in '89. What a game, game that was! Well, we went when I retired. I went to watch him and Salmon kicked ten goals down one end, and Gary kicked fourteen goals seven up the other. And Geelong so, still lost that day. Yeah, 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 and they Amazing. lost. And he kicked a couple out of bounds, so he could have broke the record. Because you, you split your webbing in that grand final, didn't you? I mean, you, yeah. I reckon another five minutes you might have been in trouble. Ayers was off injured, Platten was in cuckoo land. Well, um, was off in the first quarter. Yeah. 
Uh, Dipper yeah. was nearly gone. Well, Dermy was in trouble. Yeah. yeah, and Dermot had the whack in in the ribs, and then mm. boy, seven stitches after the game, the doctor said to me, he said, "You'd be lucky to walk again, you know." But here I am. Yeah, unbelievable, Michael. You one of <laughs> yeah, I know work. that. I know that. I I, I know that. Uh, and Michael, can you just say for us, this is our. Uh, we always promote this when we get guests on. Get your game face on. Get your game face on today. <laughs> well, well done. Good on you, Michael. <laughs> Thanks, mate.